Hey guys, my name is Bobby Walker with Journey of a New Entrepreneur. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we do a professional cleaning of a driveway, a sidewalk, a patio, or any other kind of uh, concrete flat surface. Now, this video is actually one that I shot for my pressure washing and window cleaning company. So when a new employee comes in, this is one of the things that they watch so they can get trained and know how to do it. So it's a little long, but if you're starting a business, if you're new to this and you want to know some of the ins and outs of it, it's going to be very, very beneficial for you. So I hope you enjoy it. It's a freebie. And uh, oh, uh, here, here's what I ask in return. If you like it, give me a subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell icon. And uh, if I get enough positive feedback from this, I'll share some of the other training videos on doing house washes or window cleaning and pressure washing, stuff like that. So thank you guys very much. Peace out. Hi guys, this training module is going to cover cleaning flat surfaces or concrete, specifically non-painted concrete and flat surfaces. Before we get into the actual cleaning portion, I just want to make sure that we cover the proper safety gear that's required to do the pressure washing on flat surface work. The first thing you're going to need is your rubber work boots. You're going to need proper safety gear or safety, uh, eyeglass. <laughs> I'm not even going to edit this. You're going to need proper eye protection. Then you also need a proper uh, breather or chemical mask. This is for when we're using the chemical pump to uh, apply our chemicals to the flat surfaces. There's going to be a separate module that will explain how to properly wear this mask. So remember, you must complete that module before you're allowed to do any type of work with chemicals. So we're going to break this up into little segments to show you the do's and the don'ts on how to properly clean concrete. Before we get started actually doing the cleaning, we need to make sure that we've removed any of the uh, customer's um, decorative things that may be in the way. So you can see here, we've got a few uh, uh, potted plants, we've got a little, couple little rabbits and stuff over here. So what we'll do is we take a photo of where everything is, then we'll just move that stuff over here, you know, maybe in the flower garden or sometimes in the, in the grass, we just move it out there, do all of our cleaning. And then when we're done, we wanna look back at the photo that we took so we can put the stuff right back in its place. And the reason that's important ultimately is just because it makes a big impact on the customer. Customers really appreciate those little details of ensuring that things got put back the way they were when we arrived. Once we've cleared all of the things that will be in the way of the cleaning, we've set it out in the grass or in the flower bed. The very first thing we're gonna do is pre-treat the surface with our chemical. The chemical is gonna be a chlorine and water mixture. And the way we're gonna get that mixture is gonna be right here with the proportioner. The proportioner uh, is the, is the uh, device that mixes all of our chemicals for us so we don't have to do any batch mixing. Now, I'm not gonna go over which settings we put uh, the proportioner on for flat surface cleaning because that could change depending on the types of chemicals we use and the types of surfaces that we're cleaning. So the way that you determine what settings to set the proportioner on when you're cleaning is by uh, looking at the SOP manual, the binder that's in the truck. And every type of cleaning that we do is gonna have an SOP for that. And then you'll look on there and it'll tell you what proportioner settings to use for chemical application. Okay, so you're about to see me actually apply the chemicals to these surfaces, but before I show you uh, the work being done, I wanna explain a couple of things. First off, when we do cover the surface, we're not trying to put so much on that there's a lot running off, but we do need to make sure that we cover every square inch of it so that the pretreatment can do its job just to help break down all that organic matter uh, and the, the dirt and stuff to make it easier for our surface cleaner to do its job. Now, something that's very important. So when we're doing sidewalks or we're doing the edges of a, of a driveway, it's important that when we're spraying our chemicals that we don't get the chemical on the grass itself. And the reason for that is it's going to kill the grass. So as you'll see, when I'm spraying onto the surface, I'm gonna be on the edge angling inward 
so that way I don't spray chemical on the grass. So that's very, very important. If you ever do spray chemical on a grass by accident, you cough, you sneeze, your hand moves, something like that, and you get a little on there, what you wanna do is you immediately get a water source and just make sure you rinse the grass really, really well and saturate it to prevent it from dying. All right, so as we apply the chemicals, we're gonna be using the chemical pump, which is powered by an air compressor and the chemicals of course are mixed by the proportioner and we're going to be using a fan tip so any anytime you use the chemical gun you're going to be using one of these four tips and if you could look up close you'll see that this one here is a zero zero degree tip or one that doesn't have any sort of a fan pattern the other three tips are different fan patterns that you can use to be able to cover more area or the proper amount of area for a particular application. We're gonna be using one of the fan pattern tips, so watch how it works. Now that we've applied the pretreatment of our chemicals to the surface, we'll let those chemicals set anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes before we start cleaning the surface. The way we're going to clean the surface now that the chemicals have been applied is with one of our surface cleaners. A surface cleaner is a lot more efficient than using a typical high pressure wand to clean a surface. And not only is it more efficient, but it's going to do a better job because we're not going to be leaving any lines on the surface. The surface cleaner is very simple. It consists of the frame with the handles that you hold, a gun that you use to actually turn the thing on, and then here on the bottom, it just has two tips that are high pressure, and whenever you power the thing up, it spins. So that's it. That's, <laughs> that's that. There's not a lot of uh, rocket science involved in this. So now you're going to see what it looks like when using the surface cleaner. All right, so I'm going to do a little voiceover here while we are watching me do the flat surface cleaner work. The very first thing you noticed is I actually kind of established a start and stop point at the beginning of the sidewalk just by going from one side to the other. Uh, that just makes it a little easier whenever you are going back and forth to um, have a nice finished edge. Now something to keep in mind as far as the speed of the surface cleaner is that you basically want to walk as fast as you can without leaving swirl marks. So if you move too fast with the surface cleaner, it's not going to be able to clean the entire area and you're going to see little swirl marks in the concrete itself. As far as the overlap, you'll notice that as I'm going back and forth, I am overlapping some. Uh, and that's important that you do that. You should overlap but you want to overlap as little as possible. And the reason you want to overlap as little as possible is the overlapped area is going to leave some lines in the concrete. It's going to be a little easier to see here in just a minute when we change to the other angle and you start watching the part of the driveway get cleaned. But as the driveway goes, just pay attention to those uh, lines that get left because of the overlap. Now here, I'm going all the way across the edge of the overhead door, just like on the sidewalk. I just think that makes it a little easier to get a nice finished edge whenever you're going back and forth. It makes it, uh, if you don't do that, what will happen is you'll have a bunch of little you know, points uh, that are left. And it's kind of hard to describe right now, but if you did it, you would know what I'm talking about. So whenever you go through and just cut in all the way across that edge, 
it makes it much much easier for you and makes it a little more efficient as you're going once again I'm doing my best not to overlap too much but overlapping just enough to ensure that we do get the entire area this particular driveway is not uh, wasn't too bad it wasn't too awfully dirty so we're able to get away with just doing a single pass in some instances when the driveway is uh, extra dirty you know uh, the it's been soiled for a long long time we'll have to make multiple passes uh, usually no more than two one down one back we got lucky in this situation we're able to just do it with a single pass The lines that I mentioned from the um, overlapping, you can start to see now. Uh, if you'll just look, you'll just see some faint, lighter areas that are visible just going up and down the driveway. You can see them really, really well here in the frame. That's a result of that service cleaner overlapping. Now, what will happen is when we perform our post-treatment with our chemicals at the end of this process, it will even out all of that and it will get rid of those lines for us. So we don't have to worry about them. It's just, it's just important that you're aware of them. And here I am going over the, uh, the very edge here where the sidewalk intersects with the uh, driveway. We also run the surface cleaner up on the walkway going up to the front door. We also want to make sure that we get the porch and all of that area nice and clean for the customer. You'll notice that there's going to be a little bit of stuff left behind. That's okay. We'll cover that in a, a video here in just a bit. And now here we are at the, uh, the last part of the job, which is covering the apron. So the bottom part of the driveway down there, it, we reference, or we call that the apron of the driveway. So you have the apron, and then you also have the gutter down there by the road. I'll mention this again when we get to it, but when you are cleaning the gutter, it's very important that you don't get the service cleaner onto the actual asphalt of the road itself. And the reason for that is it's just going to look really, really bad. Uh, that's what an amateur would do. And as professionals, we want to make sure that we are not um, leaving behind a finished product for the customer that they're not that they're not going to be satisfied with and have pride with themselves. So if we do something that we can have pride in, they're going to be able to have pride as well. One thing to keep in mind while you're using the surface cleaner is it's very, very important that you never let it set in one spot for more than a second. If you let a surface cleaner set in one spot, it's going to damage the surfaces that you're cleaning. All right, we're going to stop the video right here. And I just want to explain how we will close out the apron onto the gutter. And it's actually very, very simple. It's just something that you need to be aware of. So when we do this, we are going to clean the gutter in front of the driveway. So as soon as the video starts playing again, you're just going to notice that we run the surface cleaner out onto the gutter at the same angle in which the apron approaches the gutter. So it's very simple. It's not rocket science, but we want to make sure that we have a nice, straight, clean line going from that apron onto the gutter. And once again, just pay attention when you're cleaning the gutter that we do not get the surface cleaner up onto the asphalt on the street. 
the main reason is it's just going to be very obvious that you did so and it's going to look very amateur very amateurish and the customer's paying us for a professional job so let's make sure that we don't overlap onto the street so it looks nice and clean for the customer now that we've completed the portion with the flat surface cleaner we're now going to hit all of the edges that the surface cleaner could not get. Now, that's not all edges because the surface cleaner is able to get all the way to the edge of the sidewalk and all the way to the edge of the driveway as long as there's just grass bordering it. But in the areas that uh, the overhead garage door borders or some of the pavers from the uh, flower beds border, we'll have to use the high pressure gun and either the yellow or the green tip to clean those areas. So now that we have cleaned up all of the edges with the pressure wand, we're going to continue to use the pressure wand with the yellow tip to rinse the surface. So we've ran the surface cleaner over everything, but now there's going to just be a layer of dirty water that's setting on those surfaces that we just cleaned. And if we don't come and rinse that off, what we're going to do is we're going to leave a dirty surface for the customer. So we take that yellow tip and we're just going to walk around and blow off all of the dirty water and make sure that the surface is left nice and clean so we can then apply the post treatment. If you'll notice while I'm cleaning by the overhead door I am holding the wand very high and pointing downward. That is so I don't push water up underneath the garage and into the garage floor. You never know what the customer is going to have in there and we want to make sure that we don't get something wet and damage something. So as you can see, rinsing is very um, simple. There's not a lot to it. Uh, just keep in mind the the lower you hold the back of the gun, you know, so the the wand is closer to being parallel to the ground, the more efficient you'll be in w as you're rinsing. Okay, so now we have pressure washed the entire surface. We did the the pretreatment of chemicals beforehand. We've taken the pressure gun and we've hit all of the edges. And then we've also taken the pressure gun and we've rinsed all the dirty water from the surface. So at this point, the surface is pretty clean, but we're still gonna have some spots like you see right here, these black dark spots. And you can see some more over here on the driveway. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna post treat with our chemical and the post treatment is going to make the entire surface look really nice. It's going to get rid of any overlapping lines that we leave due to our surface cleaner overlapping. And it's going to get rid of all those dark spots because what those are, uh, those are organic spots. It's mold, mildew, algae, things like that. So now we're going to pre treat, or now we're going to post treat. The post treatment is going to be applied in the exact same manner that our pre treatment was. Once again, you'll want to check the SOP in your binder in the truck to make sure that you have the proper proportioner settings. But at the end of the day, we're just applying the same chemicals in the same manner that we did on the pretreatment. 
post treatment is very very important because it's going to not only make the surface look better it's going to get rid of those lines from the overlapping it's going to get rid of that those dark spots with the um, organic matter that is still there and really tough to get off but it's going to make sure that the surface stays clean longer and the reason for that is we're killing all of the organic matter with this post treatment so anything that comes back in the future is all going to be new growth because we've killed all of the existing stuff. So if someone only did a high pressure cleaning, the surface is going to get dirty much, much faster because there's still going to be some of that organic matter left behind. So what we do goes the extra mile and gives the customer a better value with what they're paying for. And then you're going to notice right here that I'm about to trip over my cord. So be careful as you're working <laughs> and make sure you don't trip, friends. And as always, be careful that you don't get chemicals in the grass. Okay, so that completes the module on flat surface cleaning for a driveway and a sidewalk. As always, if you ever have any questions, if you're uncertain of anything, you always can ask me, you can ask Caleb, you can ask your crew leader and or your trainer, and they'll be happy to answer them for you but never ever perform a task that you're uncertain of without asking first. All right guys, and this is just gonna be a little freebie for this training module. I'm just gonna show you a complete time lapse of cleaning a back patio, start to finish. So you're gonna see every method that uh, we covered in the module being done on the patio here, and I hope you enjoy. Of course, I already mentioned that I was gonna do a time lapse uh, I just wanted to make sure that everyone understands that this is being played at four times speed. So <laughs> we don't necessarily move quite this fast, although a project of this size still doesn't take us too awful long. Okay, so that completes a uh, back patio in real time. The uh, post treatment that I just put down is gonna go ahead and eat up all of that uh, organic stuff that's still on there. So if you were able to see any of that in the video, it's gonna be gone really in just a matter of minutes. And then it's gonna make sure that that, clean, or that patio stays clean longer 
because we've killed all of that algae, mildew, and mold.